Hi, everybody, and welcome to Howler TV and our interview series with famous celebrities. And today we have Arden Mirin. Marine! Damn it! <laughs> well, let's talk about that, because I'm... I'm John Lear, and everybody calls me John Lair or Lover. I call you John Lair. I yes. call you John Lair. Now, I just answer to John Lair because you look at L-E-H-R, and it should be Lair. Well, you look at M-Y-R-I-N, and it should be Mirin or Marin. Right. Everybody but... called... I always heard you referred to as Arden, Arden Mirin. Or Marin, Mirin. I guess Mirin, Arden Mirin. There's a Y in there. It says people for failure. It's a, I'm a, it's a drunk Viking Swedish family name. I did not change it when I moved to LA. It is literally just, and I'm sure, and I'm sure it's been bastardized by all my relatives. I'm sure it's not even the real pronunciation. But Arden, I'm going to cut in for one second. Yes. Hi. Hi, Queen. Can you? Yes, that's that's the. There we go. That's the framing I love. That's it. You know what? You don't cross Nancy. You want Nancy on it because Nancy's the Nancy's an American treasure. Well, I let's let's talk about that now. You are a, you are one of the most talented people I know. Thank you're you, You're gorgeous. Dad. You're friendly. You're fun to work with. You're a quadruple threat. I can't say enough good things about you, and I Thank really you, feel that. Now you, we find we've been wanting to work with you forever, um, and we finally got you on Quick Draw Ugh. to play uh, my dearly departed wife, who Bell turned Star. out Myra, was, Myra, Myra, also a Y. Yes, also um, Myra Myron. Myra Myron, <laughs> right. and My yes. now tell us a little bit about. We were just talking about Nancy. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to work with Nancy. I mean, honestly, and it's been such a, I was thinking about this because like you want to please Nancy. I trust <laughs> Nancy so much and you're in good hands. Here's the thing. You know, when you book a job with John and Nancy, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't know until the, the day you, you know, the character you're going to get. I got, I, first of all, when I booked Bell Star, um, I got, Reams of history on this real woman. Yeah, Bellstar. we threw you to the wolves because oh. Bell Star is a, a historically correct character. So Who's you've an got incredible that. But she's a great character. Great character, famous, uh, infamous uh, uh, female outlaw. But then Who's also, also a dime store novelist. Right. And she's the star of her own dime store novel. Yeah, she, I mean, she. There's reams about her. All kinds yeah. of conflicting history, yeah. like most of the Wild West history. But then we also screwed you doubly by the fact that in uh, we had killed her. We yes. had killed her off. Yes. And now we were bringing her back to life. Yes. And with and so you had a we, lot. Of it was a very so we really screwed we've you. We've never done that yeah. before. We we kind of screwed you more than I think maybe anybody. anybody we've ever had. I remember that first scene trying to tell you your like what you needed to explain to John. I was oh. like, what are we doing? Yeah. There's a lot. I had to do a ginger snap. Oh. Oh. I did your favorite cookie ginger snap because you'd improvised all the stuff. So I had to be true to it. So in answer to your question, how, what it's like working with Nancy, like basically in general, when it's not that first day in general, you know, the parameters of a scene, you know, the information, it's almost like a game, like you and Nancy, you're the ones who know the thrust of the series. You know it's going to happen to people. You know, like, what the episode is. And it's sort of fun that you get to the set. You only know your little bit of information. And so, and it's so much fun to play. Like, Nancy makes you feel like you can, like, trust yourself and just to go for it. But you <laughs> but you want, you don't want to drop the ball with that much trust. You know? So, so... It's like one of those oh. things where, and you also know that Nancy is the keeper of all the facts. Like she actually knows everything that's going to happen. Yes. And so, but it, you do feel in good hands because I feel like I've done improv things with other people where they think, where it's sort of like, okay, just go make something. And it's like, no, you guys have actually done all the heavy, you've actually sort of written it without actually writing yes. the dialogue. Well, and you know, to that point, some actors respond the way you do where they love it and they I see it, it as freedom and, and, and just go for it. Other people I think feel manipulated by it, oh. and, which I can also understand because in a way it does feel like, and eh, eh, we're not going to tell you, but the whole reason it's we, free. we tried it both ways. And the way that seems to work best is this way, because our whole thing is like, 
let's get these super talented people like you and let them do what they do best rather than having them have to lay down all of this pipe and all this right. storytelling. Mm -hmm. However, with you, we I did, did just that we and we it. totally fucked you. But I feel like I appreciated, I knew what you guys needed and I, but I felt like you, you trusted me enough to get it out in the parameters of what's true to me or the funniest way possible. Well, you made like, it so funny and you connected with my character, which is not easy to do because he's so oblivious. <laughs> and you... Both of us are clearly on the spectrum. I mean, let's <laughs> yes. Be honest. The fact but... that we connected at all is amazing. <laughs> well, and it's, but yeah, because you turn out to be a sociopath, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I think it just, like Nancy and I could not talk about how much we loved you because we always knew this because we always wanted to work. As you know, we tried to get you for other projects. And um, she, we were just so blown away that yeah. you were able to do it because as an improviser, you know, it's one thing, it's really impressive to see improvisers just free form improvise, yeah. but it's a whole nother thing to see an improviser who was totally handcuffed like you were, mm -hmm. and yet you still made it so funny and so, I mean, it was really impressive. And you were, you were really able to, you know, it's, it's very, it's often when you put two, what I call generators together, which are, you know, there are people who more like they sit back and listen and they react and they're great. Yeah. And then there are people who are constantly generating jokes and generating new material. Sometimes you put two together and it's a nightmare. Not yeah. for and us. And you guys yeah. weirdly just played off each other. Well, I just know I'm in good hands and just lean back and let Arden go because you're oh, yeah. so funny. But it's fun playing. I feel like we, the three of us, like I feel like to me, and again, for me, the kind of, I actually find it, I feel taken care of. And that I feel like I don't need to worry about constructing an entire show, an entire scene, and an entire plot. Like, yeah, I, right. that's not my job. My okay. job is just to do, get out the information, and then play. Yeah. And right. it's like, because if you're in real life, you don't know what's going to happen. So being right. true to the character in the moment, you've given me enough things to start with. But it's so fun playing with you, because I. what's fun about you is that before we did this, like, I knew you a little bit, and I'd also wanted to work with you. But, like... But what's fun is like, you know, we're both improvisers, but we didn't really know each other before. So it's like, I don't know your tricks. Yeah. And it's almost like playing tennis against a really good tennis player. Like, and it's exciting because you surprised me. Like, I feel like we both, it was almost like we both didn't know each other's moves in yeah. a way, but it was like, that made it really fun. It's like a yeah. jam band or like something that was very, I felt like you elevated what, like you just would bring it's such weird true. things that I enjoyed. Like, I feel like we're both fairly fearless in a scene. I know yeah. part of, in my real life, I'm much less brave. Yes, <laughs> when I'm too. going, there's something that's like, I will go until I hurt myself. Like, I am in. Well, and to that point, the very first scene we did, you grab both my hands and put them on your breasts. That's right. Which, <laughs> I, I, not many things throw me, I but that, that totally <laughs> threw me for a loop. And, you know, <laughs> and in a way where I just... I immediately knew, because I was worried about this character, because I was like, oh, Jesus, what have we done to this poor woman? And, you know, the, how are we going to get this? And it was so important that we got this character back. And you, when you did that, first of all, it was, you know, was really hilarious. enjoyable as a man. <laughs> but, Ten more times. Yeah, but secondly, it was just like, I immediately knew that you were in control. And that I, I had, the wor any worries that I had about how it would go just evaporated immediately. It's almost like a game of chicken where we were both like, oh, no, we're both in and we're both not going to blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like, just and then, when well, you did it, I kept saying, do it again. Do yeah. It again, do it again. I yeah. think I did chicken. Now. I think I did. I mean, I was like, my I was like, quite, so my boobs are ridiculous. They're fantastic. Thank boobs. you. They're, they're, I, they're much, they're secretly gigantic. Yes. Oh. And, and fan they're gorgeous. Not that Thank secretly. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, now, um, now I, I would, oh go ahead sorry like I do have to say like honestly I had so much fun working with you guys and it required you it requires concentration joy like I feel like we're both also like we're we're like dark weird optimists you know what I mean like we're like friendly upbeat light people but who have a dark sense of humor you know like there's like there's like there's a river of weird or darker, and then there's like sunny, bright, like... <laughs> That's so true. Yes. That is so true. I or, love that. Or upbeat pessimists. Yeah. One, exactly. one or the other. People who should be medicated in real life, oh, for sure. Yeah. 
but, very heavily. Now, okay. All right, wait, pull down your thing one oh, more Nancy time. Oh, Nancy wants to. Yeah, oh, there we go. It's a better Just shot. Trying to get oh, the look best how shot. cute you no, Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Now let's talk more about you. Now most people know you initially, I would guess, from Mad TV. Is that is that correct? I think probably yeah, probably Mad TV or Chelsea lately. Yes, right. That's true. Now, but Mad TV happened first. Is that right? Mad TV happened first. I was on like I was on a sitcom for a while before that, and then Mad TV was sort of round two for me. Okay. And then Chelsea lately happened while I was on Mad TV. Which so you, I was, yeah. Which you were a big star on that. Like, what what do people recognize you the most from? When now they, she's on About Midnight. All yeah. The time too. At midnight. At midnight yeah, is at fun. Night. Yeah, I would say probably. When I like, because I do stand up too. So when I tour, I would say it's probably Chelsea lately or at midnight right now. Yeah. So now, uh, what was it like? What was Mad TV like? Were you nervous when you when you started working, or were you? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I was terrified because I wasn't like a groundling or like a second city. So it's not like I had this stable of characters that I'd done for like ten years that I knew like the back of my hand. Right. You know, basically everything I auditioned with, I made up in my living room like for the audition. You know, and then you go in. And it's and it's because and again before that all I'd done was be, be on, I'd been on a bunch of sitcoms and so to go in you know on a sitcom it's like I play Mary you play Joe and like mm -hmm. that and it's out of my hands whatever they give me for Mary I just be the best Mary for Mad TV it's like sink or swim like if you can't write if you can't come up with new characters you know and they're, like then you're not gonna make it and it's also um, you know, you might get a lot of stuff in one week, but then the next week, if there's nothing in the table read for you, you know, there's like, you know, yeah. we would read like 70 sketches and they'd pick like six. So it was sort of like Saturday Night Live, all the competition of Saturday Night Live with none of the Vanity Fair covers or movies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's a huge following of Mad TV. I mean, there is, yeah. there is a huge fan base out there. It was because I was on the last four years. And so it was, it was odd going into this pre-existing machine you know, and having to find your footing. And then, you know, it it, it it was a place where I had to learn how to be, like, I auditioned with all these weird, like, old lady and, like, these really weird characters. And then it became pretty clear, like, that they kind of wanted me, like, sort of like the blonde. Like, they dyed my hair blonde. And and so to figure out how to be funny in a party dress and not just, like, prosthetics and, like, a hook hand, yes. <laughs> that was an interesting thing to figure yeah. out. Did you Can I be funny looking like a normal human Looking female? adorable. Did you do improv? <laughs> that show or how did that work well i found in the end like what what i seem to do best at i would panic when i would have to pitch my sketches like i have like a fear of authority so yeah. i would, like, panic when i would try to explain things i so i almost seemed to do better when i when they found that i could improvise when i could kind of go i knew i could make something funny if they kind of left me alone and uh -huh. i could so um that started nobody wanted to do the red carpets and so like, it was, like, the last minute. They're, like, we have one in an hour. Do you want to go do it? And I'd never seen this. It was for Nip Talk. And I was, like, well, I, I was having a hard time getting sketches on. So I was, like, sure, I'll go do it. And I raced home, and I kind of looked up the facts of Nip Talk. And I figured out that, like, if I made myself this, like, character that was always trying to, like, get money from people on the red carpet or get people to make out with me or, you know, like, I looked like the other girls. And I looked like the right. other girls. And then they, it would take that you would see the moment where they realize like, oh, this girl is not oh, Maria Menudo. Some yeah, lost. <laughs> yeah. Get people to play with me where I would throw myself under the bus more than them. I think and, that's that stuff was the best stuff too because you just my you, you were in your element. Yeah. Uh, okay, so after that, you so you started doing Chelsea lately. Now I did one episode of Chelsea lately. Were you on the panel? I was on the panel and I did not do well. I, it's intimidating. It's inti they're, they're, everybody's so smart. They're so yeah. fast. They're yeah. so educated at, about, and you, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not that educated. I'm trying to educate myself more about, uh, sure. yeah, but I'm not. Nancy, Nancy's the one in our team who knows everything that's going on. I mean, hell, I don't even listen to the news. I'm like a weird. Stop bragging. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken, lady. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I just play video games and watch NFL football. That is essentially my, and be with my kids. You watch football. That's oh, yeah, surprising I love, to me. Oh, I oh, love he's football. He's a football fanatic. And that I'm, is so strange you, to me. Yeah, I know. It is kind of weird. It's my Kansas upbringing. It's, oh, it's, you know, there you, you know, everyone I know who's from Kansas is a diehard. Yeah. yeah. We're and, 
And yeah. do you, are you also probably follow the college football stuff? No, are, I don't. No. I've had to make my wife is like, look. To Northwestern, right? Yes. And Northwestern lost the whole time when I was there. So Okay. So, okay. So tell me about Chelsea lately. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, you're so good at so many things. This is like, uh, I, I, and I think this is why we love working with you. You bring so many things to the table because you are a writer. You're a straight actor. We saw you in a play in New York City where you Amazing. rocked it. Thank you. At the public. Yes. I yes. did so the public called Barbecue this fall. This was highfalutin New York City theater people. Mm-hmm. At the they, public, the public yeah. theater is like. It's where they did. We're on the Hamilton stage and the Chorus Line stage. Oh, my God. I didn't know they did Hamilton there. We were. That's Hamilton before us. It was Hamilton and Fun Home. Oh, my God. I mean, it's serious theater and you came in and nailed it. So you do that. Thank you. You yeah. do stand up. You do improv. You do, uh, you know, like sitcom acting. You can nail that. Hosting, you nail. You're a good writer. You've sold pitches. You've sold pilots. You've written on on multiple shows. I mean, you got Thanks, a lot John. going on. Thank you. You know, it's a weird thing where, you know, all I ever wanted to be was just a character act. You know, I wanted to be like Madeline Kahn or like, you know, like like um, like young Terry Gar and like like young Frankenstein yeah, or yeah. like that's what I. Or like old school uh, Shirley MacLaine in the apartment. Like we didn't, I didn't have much TV grant. They only played like old movies. And so it's like, I just wanted to be like, like a Busby Berkeley lady. And, you know, it's interesting as you know, like in this, you, you never know, like I booked Mad TV years before I actually did it. I said no. (laughs) Uh Oh, something just happened on your audio. Oh, hello. No, you're back. You're back. back. Everything's good. Um, well, now, how did you take the? Okay, so those skills do seem to funnel well in something like Chelsea lately. Yeah, it's yeah. it's weird. It was weird. Like I think years ago, like when I first started doing Mad TV, I was. I think there's it's a different ball game now. I think with YouTube and people with podcasts and stuff like. It used to feel like if you are on a sketch show, you're just a sketch actor and you can't do right. you know. But you look at like Kristen Wiig or Bill Murray or something. Like they do yeah. dramatic acting. Yes. Um. But at the time, I was nervous that I was just going to be the. And then all of a sudden, Chelsea lately happened, be, and it just so happens that I love, I love pop culture stuff. Yes. So and that you was make it sort of so funny. It's like in my wheelhouse because I actually read all that garbage. Like I read all the Us Week. Like I'm happy to talk about it with somebody. So well, did you get an audition? Like how did they find you? Because I accidentally. I accidentally started hosting this show on Fox that, like, I was the first guest on, and then they just had me do forty episodes of. Wait, um, what called, show was, was that? It was called That's So Hollywood, and I it was just like this pop culture show. And but I enjoyed talking about it. So it was right when Chelsea lately started. It wasn't like you know it it wasn't this huge phenomenon that it became. And so I just started doing it, and it, I had an aptitude for talking about pop culture, and so. I got in early, thank God, because it made it slightly less scary, I yeah. think. Like, you it know. was just sort of this show. It was sort of, I was already kind of doing it on another show. Right. And then, um, but it's interesting, like, you never know. Like, in my mind, I was just wanted to be a straight actress. You never know what it's going to be. You can't control, like, at a certain point, you, you, if you're going out sailing or whatever, you have your map, but, like, the wind starts blowing. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess I'm... You know, I didn't pick stand up either. I started. Yeah, doing- well, tell me about that. How did you transition into stand? Because you're a huge stand up. I've act. seen you, and you are wonderful. You're you're really good at, at also fostering the other artists and 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 hosting those shows. It's Thank you. But you t- you tour a lot too, right? Well, I started out doing improv in Chicago, and so I was mostly just an improviser. And you know, it's basically soccer and basketball. Like, which you're on one team generally. Yeah. And so when I started doing Chelsea lately, um, people started asking me to do stand up, and I was like, "Well, I don't do stand up." And I realized a lot of it was because I was afraid of stand up. I also had a lot of respect for stand up because my friends were stand up, so I knew how hard, it was a different beast. Yeah. Like you're in shape from one thing, but it doesn't mean you can just automatically do a different sport. Yes. And so, but Bobby Lee was the one who was on Mad TV with me, and also in Chelsea, and he was like, "You know, Arden, you realize you're the only person because we would make three hundred dollars or whatever doing Chelsea." But he was like, you realize you're the only one who's not, like, making extra money on those. So at first I started doing it because people were, it was like, you can't really make money doing improv, but right. you can make some money. Doing and stand-up. Then I, and I realized it was also because I was afraid of it. So I started doing it because of that. And then I actually found, I just sort of kept saying yes and walking through my fears about it. I mean, it still terrifies me. But I found that I enjoyed that connection 
with the I enjoyed going and meeting all these people I would never meet that you right. do on the road. Why do you think it is that you can make it's sort of like burlesques and strippers? You can make money as a stand up, but you can't make money doing improv. It's so weird. I mean, did you you did improv, right? In oh, yes, I did improv in bars in Chicago. And, and like um, sometimes they do they do do um like corporate gigs with improv yes. where you go like I make never did any stuff. of that. I would have, but nobody I ever asked me. I don't know. Maybe it's different now. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, with UCB, I'm sure it's not. I think so. I think there's a hatred of improv too. Live improv. <laughs> I mean, to normal people, you yes. ask people like my cousins in Kansas, and they're like, "Oh Jesus," you know. They but stand up, they're like, "Yeah, it's a it's, date night." It's so funny because like I when I when I first like I use I used to feel that way about improv. In my mind, improv was like the bad group in college who played like freeze tag and it's like freeze like <laughs> Dr. Bologna, get your yeah. hand off my ass yeah and then I went when I was in Chicago when I was 19 I went and saw improv Olympic and I'd never seen long form improv yes, yeah. and it, it was like a game changer yeah. and improv Olympic does a, a style called the Herald which yep. uh is a sort of long form structure invented by Del Close who is who, this infamous improv teacher <laughs> I I like uh, you guys should do the Herald. <coughs> That's my. Well, he was always name dropping when I was hanging out with Bill Murray. Yeah. Like, he was, <laughs> and by the way, when Dell, I met Dell once, uh, a few times because we did a long form improv show that he liked our long form because it was a, a a sort of different approach. And uh, one time we were hanging out in his apartment in Chicago, and he was kicking heroin. And the way he was kicking heroin was by eating opium. Yes. So we had this big bar of opium. <clears throat> well, you got and we talked about improv. And then at the very end, he broke off a piece of opium and gave it to my friend and I. And we went back and smoked, and it was the most amazing opium oh we'd ever had God. in our life. Opium. Yeah, that's my I Del love, Close story. Like, old school John Lear. Yes, yes. Lear. Old school. Like Norman Lear. Yeah, yes. but see, it shouldn't be right because the age. We're so similar, Arden. We're I know. So oh my God, John, John and Nancy. I do want to say. Okay, so we're coming around to what, like, I love improv, I love long-form improv, and I love acting. Like, I love flawed characters. I love a weird character, and that's why I like work. I feel like working with you guys, you have to be a good actor. You have to actually yes. fully commit to your character. You have to know, like, so you're coming. I enjoy coming from a flawed perspective, trying to get something. I want something from you, and then playing with somebody. It's like honestly, you're the people that I would love to work with for the rest well, of my life. Well, we have that is our full intention. Yes. We want to exploit all of your talents and make money Yay. off of them, uh, and yes. have fun doing it. And we, as you know, first of all, and people who are watching this know that Quick Draw is still very much alive. Believe it or not. Uh, it's been a long, hard, arduous journey for us. Mm -hmm. It will not be back on Hulu, but it does, we can announce that it will be back and we will be working together, Arden, if we can get you. Yes. Um, and then we Again. also have a top secret project, as you well know, yes. that involves you and I heavily. I can't uh, wait. That we're working very hard to get. We've had some hiccups, which I'll tell you about later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, we are still very much pushing forward, and then we have all kinds of other things. So Arden, Arden, and and Howler, if you know, we will be offering things to you, and if I you can in. do them, we will. Yeah. I was going to say one thing that is interesting about what like this whole improv thing is when we go pitch these shows, we often kind of hide the fact that it's improvised. Oh, because that's interesting. People don't that's like that. People. Executives no. are a little scared about And they about don't that. respect us as writers in any way if they hear that it that there's improv involved. Because they, yeah. yeah, which is understandable. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, you guys really did write the season. I mean, yeah. but you were the only ones who had the script. The only <laughs> people, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Because, but, it, yeah, but man, it's that such a weird one. good, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, Arden, tell us what you're up to now. We want to know what you're doing now. <laughs> Where are you? Are you at home? Is that your house you're at? It's my house. That is beautiful. Whoa. Gonna, is, is your tree still up? No, I wish it was. I love a holiday party. Arden had a holiday I, party, and I couldn't go because I had a uh, family Hanukkah party, and my daughter refused to go to your party afterwards. But Nancy I went. was amazed at how few actors were there. It was a lot of writers. It, I hang out with a lot of writers. You do. Well, you are a writer, a serious writer. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I like people who... Um, Make things, there was you know. Both, there was both, but There's I both. I, yeah, was, I know. Was, I have more writer friends, I think. Yeah. 
But what are you doing now? So tell us what you're up to. Well, thanks for asking. I've been touring <laughs> quite a bit. Where are you going next? I'm going next. Um, it will be Indianapolis. I don't know what day yet. And I'll be in Dallas um, on tax day. Mm. I'm, I'm here for pilot season, guys. I'm here for pilot season. Good. Um, and then um, I have a book that I'm taking out. I have a podcast on the Nerdist Podcast Network that I do with Eddie Pepitone. And Aaron nice. Pepitone. I didn't know yes. that. It's sure. called oh, Will You Accept This Rose? This stuff. I've been there. Well, I know That's that. The thing now, I'm you're performing at the Nerdist uh, this Thursday? Tomorrow night. And then I also am doing an evening with Art and Marine at the Nerdist at Meltdown Theater February 1st. Nice. But like, I have a couple. I have, I have a sitcom that I'm writing. I'm doing with the Tannenbaum Company. So I'm writing a pilot. Yeah, and well, then, That is a awesome. very big company. I know it's that crazy. That is a That's big awesome. time company. I watched myself in the meeting, like trying to talk them out of me and then i was yeah. like art had stopped talking i'm like no you need to pair me with someone and they're like no we think you're capable yeah. I'm like, oh why am i ta- why am i talking against myself well because you know i, I can scared. relate we to all that hate yeah. yeah 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 scared. but i have to say the play that you guys saw me that was like that was such a joy yeah, doing that, was that. Great. Was such you a were pleasure. awesome god it was so fun hanging out in new york city like, yeah. i want to just live in new york and be a new york actor we um, went after, out afterwards afterwards arden smashed a, uh, a glass with her head yeah you were we were all laughing so hard and you laughed and and you hit like one of those pint glasses <laughs> And smashed it. I did with my forehead. And, and I saw it happen. I was sitting right across from you, and I thought we're going to the hospital. Oh yeah. But no cut, nothing. 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 Yes. I don't even drink. Like that's like the. Amazing. I know you were. That's just me. I that's know. a magic trick. Now, where is the best place for people to go to find out what all the things that you're doing? Thanks for asking. My website, <laughs> ardenmarine.com, or Twitter. I do a lot on Twitter, you but do. It, and it looks like Myron, ladies and gentlemen. It's A R D E N M Y R I N. Yes. Um, so yes. they can go to that.com or that. at. To, to yeah. Twitter, okay. um, and uh, and I know that we're we're going to be working together soon. And I, I, I love you so much. Thank you I for like doing my, this. I hope yeah. that I hope that Hollywood gives us eight billion dollars to fund us. For, if I had won the Powerball, we could just like work shoot together for the rest of our lives. I was yeah. very disappointed. Did you get a Powerball ticket? Howler Man. bought two. Uh, you know, we were ready to. Really we didn't win. Launch. We didn't win. I thought I was gonna win. I was like, I was actually nervous about like what, I, how I was gonna hide it. Yes. You I know, people, win. people out there Probably. should follow Arden on Twitter because she's always in cute outfits, showing off yeah, what she's wearing. Instagram, oh, Instagram. You yeah. have very good taste. Do you get, Thank you. Do you get free outfits or like it's. Sometimes I get some free outfits, and then, but I know how to, I know how to kind of like hit a discount store, you guys. Nice. I know my way around to Forever Twenty One. So I don't want to brag, America. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Arden. Bye, and guys. Mirren, Myron, Marine, whatever. Yes. But, I'll call you on a, a cellular telephone shortly. Okay, or, good. Or I can just turn this. Howler.tv, all improv, all the time.